Turn around, God. Amid all the changes of life, you alone remain the same. We acknowledge the uncertainty of our life and earth. We are given a mere handful of days. And our span of life seems nothing in your sight. All flesh is as grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. For the word of our God will stand forever. For oh God, our hope is in you. And even in the valley of the shadow of day, you are with us. O oh Lord, let us know our end and the number of our days, that we may know how fleeting life is. O oh God, hear our prayer today. 
and turn your ear to our cry. Almighty God, be not deaf to our cries or blind to our tears. For we live as strangers before you, wandering pilgrims as our ancestors were. But you are the same, and your years shall have no end. Dearly beloved, we are gathered today to pay our final tribute of respect to that who was mortal of our deceased loved one and friend. To you members of the family who mourn your loss, we especially offer our deep and sincere sympathy. May we share with you the comfort afforded by God's word for such a time as this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come into this sanctuary of celebration, realizing our utter dependence upon you. We know you do love us and can turn even the shadow of death into the light of morning. Help us now to wait before you with reverent and submissive hearts. You are our refuge and strength, O oh God, a very present help in time of trouble. Grant unto us your abundant mercy. May those who mourn today find comfort and healing balm in your sustaining grace. We humbly bring these petitions in the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Minister Lex Forrester, for our invocation. I want to just ask you for some house rules, and those house rules will be, we are asking everyone to please keep your mask on and uh, try your very best to distance yourself. If you're close to someone, please don't touch. And uh, so we will adhere to this, all right? Um, the ushers may come and tell you if we see you too close, you may be told to just separate a bit because we know that we are over the limit at this point in time. If you need to use the washroom, we are asking you to please go out from the side to the back door to go to the washroom, not to the front, but use the back entrance. And we want to be mindful of all the protocols that we have before us. We want to welcome all of you this day to this wonderful celebration service. I want to recognize the pastor of the house, Reverend Dr. Derek Forrester, and his wife, this lady, Mrs. Forrester, we're glad to be here. And there are some other ministers who have joined us, as you see, and they will take their seat because I know that they are longing to sit. But after our wish, they can, they, you all could have your seat at this time, gentlemen. Yes? And we want to especially welcome the Walker family. Daddy Walker is here. And uh, Daddy Walker, just lift your hands. Just raise your hands. Amen. Amen. And we want to continue to give God praise for him that God will be his strength. He will be his strong tower. He will run into him and he will be safe. He will be comforted today together with all his sons and uh, daughters and daughter-in-laws, everyone, grandchildren, everyone who will definitely miss Mammy Walker is who I call her. And uh, so um, we want to thank God. You just have to stand a little longer because we have the scripture reading at this time from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. And we have JL who would come and read for us. And right after, you may have your seat as we begin some tributes. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. A reading from Eclas Eclasticus. Ecclesiasticus, sorry, 3, 
3, chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, and a time of war, and a time of peace. Amen. You may have your seats at this time. And I hope you heard the part that said, a time to born and a time to die. No one. We all will return to our maker one day. We have with us the Bethel Wellness Center representative. And uh, I know that Sister Walker would have been involved in many, uh, with many groups in Tobago. Um, I was talking to her son, um, Walton, and he was describing, Mommy was one of the best dramatists, and she wrote dramas in Tobago. She was a Sunday school teacher. She was a missionary. You name it, this lady was all for Christ. And so could we have the representative from the Bethel Wellness Center to come at this time and give your tribute. Let's put our hands together for our sisters as they come. Good afternoon, church. Joanna Walker was an ardent member of the Bethel Community Wellness Group. She has been on many, many travels around Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean island. She will surely be missed by all. With deepest sympathy, Brother Walker, those we hold most dear never truly leave us. They live on in the kindness they showed and comfort they shared and the love they brought into our lives. Although it's sad to lose Sister Joanna, who was one dear to every one of us in the group, there is comfort in remembering all the time she made such a difference in our lives. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. First from President and members of the Bethel Wellness Group, to, the Martin, to Brother Martin Walker and family with much love. Our deepest sympathy to you, sir. Brothers and sisters, uh, my song is Until Then. My heart can sing when I'm forced to remember a heartache here in spot a step less. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
to be in the house of the Lord. It don't matter what uh, occasion, we are glad to gather in the house of the Lord. And we want to really thank those two ladies from the Better Wellness Center for their greetings, their tributes, and their song. God bless you and continue to bless you as you serve him. We have some tributes from the Canaan Church of the Nazarene and the Lowland House of Praise followed by the Bethany Church of the Nazarene. And so I will call the two churches uh, the representative of the both of them. So as soon as one is completed, the other will uh, take this, the mic, the representative from Canaan Church of the Nazarene, and then Lulan House of Praise, your tribute. All right, well, we have pastor with us from Canaan. He was supposed to come in the minister's tribute, but he will be so Reverend Cuthbert Gordon. Afternoon to everyone, and I want to especially express, on behalf of course, my family and as well as the church family, our deep condolences, or some would say sympathies, to the Walker family. Um, we are in this life truly for a season and a reason, and. Um, Sister Walker did discover her reason, and she did complete her season. And um, therefore, it is instructive to all of us to know the season and the reason. Um, I don't know if it's Mark Twain who says, the two most important times or events of one's life is the, is the day you were born, but the greatest of all is when you understand why. And to sum up Sister Walker's life, I did not, I was not you know, in Tobago when she were in Canaan. Of course, I met her along the way while she were in um, this wonderful uh, vineyard of Bethany. And so I know um, some of the other sisters will come and they will share because they have more experience you know, with her than myself. But her life, as I have heard it and I've seen it, I want to close this tribute in using um, the Negro spiritual. And I, and I made a quotation from Martin Luther. Martin Luther King Jr. says, when he passed away, he was said speaking to the people during the civil rights. He said, um, if you get somebody to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to take too long. Tell them not to say why I went to school. You say that's not important. You say, tell them not to say how many that I won a Nobel Peace Prize. You say, that's not important. You say, tell them not to say how many awards I won. You say, that's not important. You say, but what I want you to say is that I did try to feed the hungry. I did try to clothe the naked. And he closed off by saying, which to me is a, a, a synopsis of Sister Walker's life. If I could help somebody while I pass along, if I could help somebody with a word of song, if I could do my duty as a Christian art, then my living shall not be in vain. Peace. <laughs>
short people in stature. Yes, we always take the position in front. I, I remember being in the choir one time and I said to them, the reason I'm in front is to take care of the little ones so that they wouldn't give trouble, but then the little one grew up. And then I said, well, that was to prepare those who are coming. So, you know, short, she would always be in front. And so we want to put your hands together for the, uh, the choir of Bethany Church of the Nazarene, where we know Mommy Walker would have been very, very instrumental in this. Good afternoon. We, the pastor, church board, and members of the Bethany Church of the Nazarene, express our deepest condolences to Brother Martin Walker and the rest of the family of our dear beloved sister, Joanna Walker. Sister Walker has been a founding member and stalwart of this congregation. The late Joanna Walker served diligently on every single church board within this congregation. Her years of yeoman service included trustee, head steward, Sunday school superintendent, Nazarene Missions International, that's NMI, Vacation Bible School. She, she served as the director for our women's group, sports club, compassionate ministry. She was also the choir mistress, head counter, and took care of providing and serving us the emblems of four communion faithfully every month. She humbly accepted any task with a smile. It should be noted that while this sanctuary was under construction, she worked alongside the workmen and provided nutritious meals for the workers, many of whom were her own family members. Sister Walker was passionate for the things of God. She served with excellence and taught many of us life skills and coping strategies. She encouraged many of us, and some of her favorite sayings were, and I quote, No, there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course and I have kept the faith, unquote. She had other sayings such as, all you not give up. Not give up, you know. All you not give up. All you could do it, not give up. Hold on, don't care what happened, trust God. And if anyone had a grudge, she would say, no worry about that. Let us continue to work for the Lord. He will see us through. For the woman's group, she was always prepared with materials and other items for the women. And just in case we did not show up with anything, she would always pull out from her magic bag items and say, you're not coming in class to sit and look. I have this and I, I bring that. Come, let me get going. Do something. She always provided, and it was never too much for her to give for everyone to learn. I don't know who that baton was passed on to, but after COVID, and we all can gather and fellowship with each other without restrictions, one of us will have to continue to carry on her legacy. I'm not calling names. It was the late Dr. Miles Monroe who said, and I quote, don't die old, die empty. That's the goal of life. Go to the cemetery and disappoint the graveyard. As the graveyard is the richest place on the surface of the earth, because there you will see books that were not published, ideas that were not harnessed, songs that were not sung, and drama pieces that were never acted, unquote. Sister Walker emptied herself in service to God and her fellow men. She was prepared for this next journey. Sleep on, my darling church mother. Sleep on. May her soul rest in eternal peace and rise in glory.
Uh, we have some pastors with us, and at this time we would call them to give some tributes. I know one in particular would have um, known Sister Walker from Canaan before I found out that Reverend George. Before Canaan had their concrete structure, you know, Sister Walker would have been there. And so we want to hear from these two pastors who already heard from Reverend Gordon. And so I will Good afternoon to each one of you. I sat and listened to what was said there with the Bethany group. And it is interesting that I would have come up last night and I had to be here, irrespective of what it took. I have been throughout, as a matter of fact, Sister Walker and I will have been from inception. Let me say inception. With Reverend Doyle Harmon as the missionary, Reverend Doyle, at where the church was first before we went to Guy Street and so on. We came up here, started work as a Sunday school preaching point until it got, got organized. But prior to that, Sister Walker, there were uh, Harold Potts, Hugh, Sandy, and Sister Walker had a sister, Sister Lucille. We used to be with her. I trust that she, would, if she's here, heard the message and sort of get a hold of if she's not there. But we used to really spend some time laboring in the vineyard. Bethany was only one. She would have started this Sunday school where she was in Bethel. We had monks in George, Mariah, and the Black Rock. Unfortunately, they all didn't come out. However, I want to say this evening that throughout the years, there has never been, and let me stop to say this, that in every church, God puts at least one person who must be there to hold that light and to stay fast, stand fast, as to see that his work goes on. Sister Walker ha happened to be the continuation here because she was that type of person down there. Another person I, I, you know, most of the people I call there just now are gone, but Sister Pollard, Pearl Bonnie Pollard. I looked for her number, I didn't get it. Nevertheless, she would have been one who would have been up and down with us throughout when we were down through the years. And throughout those years, I don't know for the ask her for about two minutes, you can wrap six years in two minutes. But I just want to say this, that never one day, one Sunday, have I had to be, you know, disappointed, not only in Sister Walker, but in that group. They were special, and Sister Walker was exceptional. After I would have left Kenan, when Sister Walker came up to Bethany, I was down there. I had to go to Trinidad. Circumstances not of the best, but I thank God this evening. I stand in the presence of God this evening and thank God for Jesus Christ. There is a scripture in the Bible which says, it's I think Romans 3, 23. All have sinned. I have seen down through the years, there are some people who that scripture doesn't apply. Or it seems that way. In other words, they can't sin at all. And I am glad this evening for Jesus Christ. And I just want to say above, before I leave here this evening, she has never, ever one time disappointed. And I heard the, in the tributes of the continued work that she did in the church. And let me say it also. I stayed in contact with her throughout the years, be it 60 or how many, throughout the years. I spoke to her. It might have been about a month or a little under a month before she passed. We talked all the time, encouraging each other. And she would encourage and she would, I would encourage. And so I thank God for giving me that opportunity to meet someone like her. 
We thank God for Bethany Church as well. Worked here a lot <laughs> from, in, you know, Sunday school preached in point unto the church. And I praise God for what it is today. God is good. You who are here this evening, please, people, the time is, but it's short. You are seeing what is going on around you today. And as was quoted, yes, she did fight a good fight. Of course, it's finished. She's kept the faith. It was not only working alongside the workmen. She worked before. And given the opportunity, she would work after. May God bless you all this evening. I'm, I'm thankful again, even for this opportunity to speak to you. afternoon to one and all. I greet you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. The Roberts family was Tante Jo's main connection to Bethany. And the original Roberts family of which I belong was always a family of concern for her. And so I recall in the very early days of my life, I think it, I would have been about seven or eight at the time, um, she was concerned for the boys. There were seven boys um, in, in my family and one girl. And our Christian education was important to her. So a Sunday school was started in those early days. Our sister, well, she was Charles Thompson and Pastor Tittle. Those were the people who started the Sunday school here in Bethany, which I attended. And about age 10, I don't know how many recall that there was the, the church on Bokbokali in Canaan. I attended, she made sure that I attended VBS, myself and my other brothers. And that interaction at the VBS left a lasting impression on my life. Uh, my brother Carlton, who is a godson, would have loved to be here today, but he said he's having, he was having real difficulty coming over. And so again, he sends his condolences, his regards, his love to the family. Tante Jo, as we knew her, As I reflect on her life, I wondered why her mother did not call her Dorcas. And I meant to say Mama. Uh, those of the family know just how precious Mama was to us. And um, watching Sister Walker's operations over the years um, is truly reflective of Dorcas in the Bible. She used her hands, her heart, her life for the glory of God and for the blessing of people. So that not only is the church family suffering a loss locally, but also Tobago has suffered a loss. And I believe her place would not be so easy to be filled, Debbie. Might take about three of you together to fill her place. But we thank God that her labors are ended here and she's on to glory. And the Bible assures us of those who are in Christ, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we give God glory today. And we praise, and again we extend our condolences and pray that the close family will experience the comfort which only the Lord God can give. He's the great comforter. God bless you. Members of the Greedy family, I rise to extend condolences on behalf of our uh, our superintendent, the Reverend Dr. Victor Everton George. He had every 
plan in place to be here. He arrived at Piaco. His original flight canceled. Then he was placed on another flight, canceled. The next available flight, as he told me earlier on, would be sometime 6.30, thereabout, this evening. So he has sent his condolences. And regrettably, he cannot be here in person. But his heart is here. And Brother Martin, he would have you to know that you are in his prayers and he'll be there for you. Additionally, my predecessor, the Reverend Jennifer Tom, called this morning and asked me to convey, extend on her behalf, sincere condolences. As a matter of fact, Jenny sent uh, a message by way of technology. But there comes a time when even technology protests. It's one of such moments. We just can't get it over. But she extends her condolences. And she prays that God will undergird you. You will experience the strengthening of his everlasting arms. God bless you. I am Master Saunders extending all the greetings from the Saunders family, from probably the classmates of Walters who may not be able to be here. And I'm going to ask your permission, um, Pastor. I am going to ask your permission. I have just lost a friend of 38 years and his mom. So the song that I'm going to do today is going to go out to all three persons. And may they rest in eternal peace. Now I have listened about Miss Walker. And according to Walton, mommy used to walk up and walk up and walk up that hill. Maybe she got some strength from married to a walker. I don't know, so she was double energized. So I'm gonna do this song. I did not know the lady, but I'm taking your word for it, of her ability to function in the most, most, whatever way each and every one would think, right? And I, a man had a dream. He was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky, last seen for his life. When he saw two sets of footprints in the sand. So we got three, we got two ladies. As in last scene, flesh before their eyes. There were many times along the path of life. Miss Walker, only one. Set of footprint was seen in the sand. Hey, and she wondered what this could have meant. Guess what she did? She questioned the Lord. She questioned the Lord about. His word. She said, I, I don't understand that and I would need you. You are. That's what she thought. You leave me alone in the midst of my storm. And the Lord looked at her and said, Listen, Johanna, if I pronounce it right. My child, my precious, precious child. In the night, no one and no one was by your side. Do you believe that, church? 
It was I who carried you through your storms of life. And that's why you saw one footprint in the sand. Oh, 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 oh my child, my precious. Precious child, I love you, and I would never ever leave you so high. In times of trials and suffering in your life. It was I who carried you through your storms of life. And all she can say was, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And all that's good and perfect comes from you you're the heart of my contentment over all i do jesus you're the center of my joy come on church i know you got the last part right Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And all, and all that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Over all I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Jesus, hey, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And all that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment over all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Thank you. We thank you, Ms. Saunders, for blessing us. We have a scripture reading from the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 33 to 39, and we'll ask Ronel Walker to come and read for us at this time. A scripture reading is taken from Romans, chapter 8, and not Romans 9. From verse 32 to 39. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies it. Who is he that condemn it? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather than is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor the powers, 
nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other cre creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you. Amen, amen. The word of the Lord is true. And so we thank God. We want to recognize Bishop Michael Anthony from the St. Peter's Spiritual Baptist um, Organization Church. And so we welcome you, sir, with us today. Thank you for being with us. We, this is the time where, you know, we get to meet the lady herself. The eulogy. This is where, you know, we hear probably the stories and we get a good glimpse of 86 years. And this service cannot really do justice to Mami Walker's life. Because, you know, if it wasn't for COVID, this might have been a five-hour service. Because there's so much that we have to put into one and a half to two hours. And I think we are doing very good. So I, I want to call at this time Brother Felix, who will come and uh, give us the summary life of a good woman, Johanna Johanna, you know, Walker. I want to start here this evening by talking about my aunt, Johanna Walker. My journey in Christ literally started with this woman taking me from Bethel, where they live, and walking at the age of nine, ten years through Camby, through Bethany, through Golden, Golden Grove, and to the church in Golden Grove. At a tender age of nine to 10, there was a pastor there who always attracted me, and I think he was a missionary, and I was always impressed by this blue organ. The blue organ? Mm -hmm. He got his rhythm from pulling and pushing. And I always admire Auntie Jo, her diligence, her determination, and her consistency in attending those meetings. And there was something I wanted to mention here, is that there was a woman with strong spirit the scripture says that the spirit of a man sustained his infirmity. The spirit of that woman was so strong and rigid inside of her. No sickness kept her back. None whatsoever. And I guess everybody here would agree with me. Now, I could say so much, but I was going to cut this a bit shorter than I had, but as... The Reverend says, which who I'm going to recognize now, Dr. Forrester and his wife, and Reverend Batiste and all other ministers on the pulpit. Let me start by saying that Johanna attended the Bonacord Moravian School and then the Bonacord Government School. And between that time to her marriage with my uncle was a woman who always seek to improve herself and to really make herself a woman of renown. On the 26th of December, 1964, she got married to my uncle, Martin Walker. And um, I would have liked you all to see the picture. They have the picture hanging inside of their house of the beauty of a woman and the handsomeness of my uncle. Yeah. She had five biological children, Hilton, Dalton, Walton, Frank, Frankie, and Carlos, and three stepchildren, Dolores, Curtis, and Ruby. Her daughters-in-law, Anne, Natasha, and Nona. And one would have been, one would have been, I let me say would have been on the way when she was alive, but one to come, and that's Denisha. 
She was a woman with a giant heart who was well supported, cared for, and loved by her husband, Uncle Martin. <laughs> stress on him because ever too often the good things about an individual is spoken after they move from here. But I want to mention my uncle and the important part he played in her life. He filled her heart with joy and fully supported and encouraged her with a walk with God and everything that she attempted to do. He did that. And expansion and he was an excellent husband to her. <laughs> Auntie Joe had loved family and you remember the names of a Melbourne and a Hendrickson and a Carrington. She was so engrossed in the family that ever so often she would call one of her children named by other members of the family. And sometimes they're there and they're not responding and she would call. You know who I'm talking about. You know which one I call. Don't make fun with me. And such was the woman. She remembered her name and she always used to refer to fellas like Bonte and Leo and Vinita and Boyo. Just to get the attentions of her children. She will call Kai, her granddaughter, by her niece's name and those sort of things. And Kai would rather remind her, mommy, my granny. My name is Kai. She said, well, Kai, you know who I'm talking about. Oh, gosh. I'm not a girl, you know. This is the important thing about her. She was a Sarah. She took care of her husband and her children. She was a Deborah. She ruled well. And if you remember the prophetess uh, Deborah, she was a heroine in the New Old Testament. And she inspired Israel to mighty victory in Canaan. Yes. She was a Ruth. A woman who was determined to follow God and the godly pattern even unto the end. That's her. She was as an Esther. Brave. Literally brave. To go before a king who was completely different than a genealogy. But to stand before a king to save the genocide of a people. That's the woman who is here, to, who has gone before us. Auntie Jo, as she was commonly called, had many talents. When on school holidays, she would call and have us come together to work with her. Some of the things I could clearly remember, she used to patch foreign. I don't know if some of you may remember that. We used to cut cocoa. I remembered once she was teaching me how to cut the cocoa. And she said, do not hold it with your hand, boy. And I held it with my hand, and I cut. And this finger almost cut off. But she was a nurse. She was a nurse. She found a way to stop this thing from running me down because I was very small. I'll put on a little bit of weight now. You know the AD way that go with when you cross a certain age? I don't know. Right. All right. And um, I mean, she was uh, what you call a leader inside of the structures of our family. It was not for us only to work, but was finding her uh, work for idle hands to do or for idle hands to do. And in hindsight, what I saw. She was literally training us for adulthood. Something that I could stand by today, and I spoke with my wife, I spoke with my children, is that I have never heard, never heard Auntie Joe and Uncle Martin in an argument. And those were values, those were values that I took and carried straight into my marriage. I they taught me to function as a man inside of my environment as well. So whatsoever I have developed, started with the journey. And, and nothing is wrong with that because we know the journeys of the children of Israel. They started out from Egypt and they began to mature and grow and grow. And so, I think it was Paul who says that Barnabas planted and Paul, yes? 
motivated, watered, strengthened, and bring to fulfillment onto the end? Yes? In terms of a talent, residing inside of her was a wealth of talent. She was a seamstress, a cake decorator, a handicraftswoman, and a nurse, as I mentioned before. Let me mention this here, is that she was a cook. And one of her favorite cook food was a wicked pumpkin soup. And you recognize that, that pumpkin soup is one of the most expensive dessert in restaurants today. Yeah? You agree with me? Yeah. It is, indeed. Auntie Joe would prepare a full bridal party from bride to flower girl. I'm not sure if she was paid for all, but she did it with joy and a willing heart. Yeah? I was told by Walton that Auntie Joe was so engrossed in the sewing that she would be in the kitchen cooking and everyone has to be alert and pay attention because they know she would make a mistake when she asks for certain things. So she would want a spoon and she would say, pass, this is us for me. <laughs> or pass the inch tape for me. Or pass some thread and needle. I mean, it was really funny. And the children would have really got her going. She was a cake decorator. She would bake cake, she would ice and decorate with beauty and patience. And that was critical, patience. She was a chemist inside of that whole operation. She knew exactly the correct temperature to bake the cake, the correct temperature that was required, the correct temperature that was required for icing. She knew all of that. And she preferred to bake the cake. She was a handicraftswoman. I would tell you is that I wanted, as I speak about the handicraft, I wanted to take a quote from Michelangelo. Michelangelo says, I create a vision of David in my mind. And then I took away everything that was not David to create the formation of what I wanted. Auntie Joe was the individual, if, and you can take it and put that into the human uh, 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 context. She saw a goodness in a child and she take everything that was not good, put it away to bring out the good in that individual. Such was the woman. She had a mind that was extremely creative and anything she thinks of, she creates. For those of you who would have probably visited a home, if you walk through the area that she occupied, as a room of sewing, she has every single craft you can think about. As a young guy, she taught me how to crochet. Yeah? I bought a needle and I had my thread. And so when I was going to school, I used to make those little bands and tie around my hand. And sometimes when I, when I went got to school, just to make my little pocket change, I used to sell it for 25 cents. Yeah. So, she was full of talent. A Christian life, she loved and she had a passion and a love for God that was immeasurable. Every conversation with her, she would remind you about making your calling an election show. My interaction and conversation with her were always from a place of acknowledging the goodness of God. These are some of her quotes. I hope you're making your calling an election show. I love me, Jesus. I can't make it without Jesus. All the time, God is good. And God is coming soon. I think this was one of our favorite. It is because Jesus, I am still here. It is because of Jesus, I am still here. Our unwavering determination gave her the strength to go through what some may call a little sickness. But that scripture which says, the spirit of a man sustains their infirmity, resident inside of her, was a massive, mighty, strong, unmovable spirit that caused that woman to stand strong 
in the midst of what she went through. And so in the midst of her illness, she never wavered in faith. What a strength of a woman. And so from this point, I want to commend all the people who would have supported her throughout, her in-laws, her daughters-in-laws, all those who would have supported her. And I want to finish here now by just saying a poem that was given to us by Nona. And he said, don't stand by my graveside as if you were saying goodbye. I am still here. I did not die. I stand before you, but you don't see me. I give you signs to show it's me. My body has gone, but my soul is free. Under that stone, it is not me. I see, I touch, I smell, I feel. Everything they say about heaven is real. If you see your tears and hear you sigh, please don't ever say goodbye. Just trust my word and carry on. I'm still here. I'm not gone. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Brother Peter, for sharing the life of Johanna with all of us. Mommy Walker, Sister Walker, Tante Jo, however you want to call her. We know that she is a child of God. We, just before our message from Pastor, from Dr. Forrester, we have a young lady, uh, Carrie Ann, and so we want her to come at this time and bless us. Good afternoon, everyone. You may be down and feel that God had somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you cannot get through. But right now it's
Psalm 90. And I've entitled this, this sermon, this meditation, Confident Expectation. Moses wrote as follows, verse 9 of Psalm 90. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Then Paul, writing in 2 Timothy and the fourth chapter, has these words to say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now I know that there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me at that day, not to me only, but unto all them also that love is the parents. You know, throughout the generations, many definitions have been given for this earthly existence that we call life. Therefore, for the hedonist or the pleasure seeker, life is to pursue pleasure. For the philosopher, life is all about wisdom, a kind of an unknown odyssey, journey. For the affluent, the rich and the famous, life is what you make it. And yet I would submit to us this afternoon, that the, the, those, yes, those are just a few of the definitions given, but they do not suffice. No, and therefore the question is, what exactly is life? Life with its fascinations and its attractions. Life with its joys and its sorrows. Life with its choices and its consequences. Life with its pleasures and its pains. Life with its triumph and its tragedy. Life with its thrills and its chills. What exactly is life? Three score years and ten. And then we fly away. What is life? Life with its daybreak and setting sun. You know, I want you to understand that Moses found it difficult to define life. Therefore, he gave a description of life. Not a definition, because it's difficult to define. And so he has provided us with a description. Moses, in describing life, human existence, tells us that life in all of its practical dimensions and eternal dimensions is like a story being told, a tale that is told. How intriguing and how fascinating. And you know as well as I do that is always the intention, especially of children, for an interesting story to continue on and on and on and on. But you know, sometimes members of the Bereaved family, just sometimes, the said story comes to an abrupt end. It comes to an end amidst the curiosity, amidst the, the suspense, the joys and the drama, amidst the felicity, Yes, every now and then, an interesting story 
comes to an, an abrupt end. And we are left with a desire, desire, a longing for more. Sometimes life continues on and on for too long, becoming stuporous or, or boring and, and uninteresting. Sometimes it's end quickly. We spend our years on the tale that is told. Now, it, it might interest us to know, and Joanna would have me tell you this, that we are shaping our own story. We are writing our own stories and shaping our own destiny. That is the essence of what Moses is saying here. Therefore, let, let me ask us <laughs> the following four questions. What are you writing? What are you composing? With these few and fleeting years, that you've been given? The answer to the question isn't blowing in the wind, you know. The answer to the question is to be found in your lifestyle and your mannerism. What are you writing? How advanced are you? Will there be a line in your story that says, giving my life to Jesus Christ was the best thing that ever happened to me. Come on, hey, steady, 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 steady. The other question, what are you living for? What are you living for? What are you living for? See, the secret of a happy life is knowing and serving Jesus Christ. And so I ask again, what are you living for? <laughs> are you living the consciousness of something more to come after death would have victimized you? Third question. Will others find pleasure reading your story? It will survive you. Your story will survive. And there are those who say, thank God we've gone. But your story will survive. It will survive. Will others find pleasure? And will your story serve to influence somebody in accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life? Hey. Let us find pleasure in your story. Will there be an element of weakness there? When it speaks of a relationship between yourself and, and the Lord, the righteous judge? Hey. Oh, the fourth question. Do you suppose that your relatives will be left with more questions than answers? Do you suppose you, the, the, they'll struggle in their efforts <laughs> to come to terms with exactly where you spend eternity. They told me to be short. I shall be short. You know, some years ago, I buried a millionaire. But not. He did not believe in God. After the funeral, I received a beautiful card in the mail from the widow. Broke my heart and brought tears from this willow's eye. It says, Dr. Forrester, thank you for what was indeed a wonderful funeral service. But I pray, I ask you to pray that life will provide Guido <laughs> with a resting place because I don't know where he's gone. I don't know where he's gone. I cannot say exactly where he has ended up. 
So I ask you to pray that life would be kind to him. And provide him a resting place somewhere out there. Uncle. See, my friends, God has given us the responsibility to choose between the two great alternatives of life. Yes, and so I ask again, will there be a line in your story? You are writing it. You are shaping your destiny. You are making your choice. Left or right, no neutrality. You either saw us or no saw. Hey. Now you ask me very quickly, Reverend Forrester, where does the late Joanna Walker fit into all of this? Well, friends, I'm happy to report to you today. <laughs> yes, I am happy to report. I'm good. I'm happy to report to us today that Joanna Walker ended the first episode <laughs> of her story with pulsating and unabating confidence. Yeah, pulsating and unabating confidence. I knew her. She was sitting right over there. That confidence, I reference the confidence that is echoing and resonating in, in, in those parting words of St. Paul, as recorded in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. And by the way, it was Joanna's favorite scripture. Yes. I have fought. You have some bad fight. <laughs> I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have run the race. I, I went the distance. I kept the faith. Henceforth. Henceforth. In other words, no, I know. Not no, I don't know. It doesn't say that. It says, come on, son. No, I know that there is a crown. Awaiting me in glory with the right judge of the Lord that give to me on that day. Consummate confidence. And not only unto, but unto all of them. Pulsates and resonates with confidence. That's Paul. But the same can be said of Joanna. Yeah, Joanna is used the little time she had for eternal purposes. She was faithful to her call and she faced that calmly. Being cognizant of the fact that God shall reward her. And now I know I have uh, ministered to those who said, I know I don't know. I don't know. Yes, I have. Yes, I've had the unfortunate. Listen to the woman. I know I know. I know I know. Henceforth, I know. Oh, there is a crown awaiting me. A one constant. Loving people. Loving others and serving Jesus Christ. That was the constant. We spend our years like a toil that is two. Three score years and ten. But sometimes, just sometimes, the story ends. And it leaves us with nostalgia. And a desire for more of the same. And sometimes all we have are memories. And memories in this context are not sufficient. Let's see if we could finish up here. What are you writing? 
the Lord has found pleasure reading your story. The answer isn't blowing in the wind. No, 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 no. And it might interest us to know that Moses would have us to understand that the story of life has two episodes. That's what he's saying to you. That's what the, the job of the preacher is all about. To bring it out and show it to your pulpit. Squeeze it and it'll come out. And you see, that's what's called pulpit. So Moses, there is a sense in which Moses is saying, you know, in his psalm. Yeah, that the story of life has two episodes. And therefore, premise on that is the fact. That death is not a question mark. Amen. Death is not an exclamation sign. Death is not a comma. Oh, no, no. Death is not a colon. If you don't understand, ask your English teacher tomorrow to tell you what they are. Make them for you. Exclamation, comma. Yeah. And, 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 and death, most certainly, is not a full stop. No, 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 no. Don't believe them. When they tell you that when you're dead, you're done. Don't, don't, don't believe them. Once you believe them, you deceive yourself. And self-deception. I got it. It is the worst kind of, of, of deception. No, that is not a call and is not a full stop. Pastor, then what is that? I propose and I submit to you that death is a semicolon. You know the camera will fly over it? <laughs> that suggests to me that there is something more. <laughs> yes, Joanna. Something more to come. Something more to come. Yes, something more. Something far better. Amen. Far more promising. Far more eternal. It's a semicolon. It's a semicolon. So don't feel that when you're dead, you escape. Like the man who told me, the wife, the wife told me that the husband said, we must carry way out at sea when he dead and throw him out there that fish could eat him. He doesn't believe in resurrection and he doesn't believe in, in, in nothing. I'm going out. White lady, yeah, rich woman again. Oh, rich people up north. Yeah, I encountered a lot, but I'm still poor. Hey! <laughs> Why are we going out? She said, Stop the boat. Stop. Stop the it's a yatta. Stop it. We are taking back this body. Yeah. <laughs> to St. John's Public Cemetery. And we are, we, are, we are in turn there. Let him get up if he wants to get up. Let him rise, English folk. Let him rise. If he be able to. Uh, so you see, she had had an epiphany. Yes. She had had an epiphany. Oh, no, he did not believe. Yeah. Nothing. Anything. I believe that there is going to be a morning after. Amen. I believe, Reverend, that there is going to be a resurrection. And I believe that all of us shall stand before the great August God. Yes, yeah, as a matter of fact, John says in Revelation 20, the books were open. And another book, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of that book. According to what? According to what they what are you writing? And then the last time you look over your story, like um, your personal editor, you are the editor for your own composition. What are you writing? There is going to be a morning after. Amen. Beloved in Christ. Friends, let us not allow ourselves to be deceived. And let us not allow fickle-minded people to mesmerize us. Let us understand that the story of life 
two episodes. It means, therefore, that the second that would have been shaped by the first, come on now, uh huh, it's right there, would be read on that day. What day? That certain day. That great day. When the eastern sky. If you don't believe in that, don't believe in your own reality and the existence of your being. Because all of the promises of God are here and amen. The eastern sky shall be flung open. And the great August God Paul calls him the Lord, the righteous judge. Not the corrupt judge, but the righteous judge. So the man shall be rewarded. And a man shall be given that which he would have been deserving of. He ain't going to give me what you're supposed to get. Rest assured that none will escape. Henceforth, no, I know. No, I know. Confident expectation. Most inspiring, you know, you know, Joanna. The Joanna I came to know. Regrettably, her time is so short, but God has a, a higher calling. She's going to full continue with her work in another place. Amen. But the Joanna walk I came to know had the most inspiring love for her family, church family, and for her friends. Not to mention, man, where you be? Your mom, you're the firstborn? You are the firstborn. Sir, you are the firstborn? You are that person. Your mama had a wicked smile. Her smile exuded a halo for miles. So before you see her, smile is all the way. God will stand with me and stay with me for decades to come. She served this congregation with distinction and dedication, as you would have heard in the tribute from our secretary there. And so, my friends, as we lay her mortal remains to rest today, we do so in profound gratitude to Almighty God for having sent her our way. Many lives have been touched by her witness and her walk. Many lives have been transformed by the power of the living God because Joanna shared the love of Christ. As we lay her mortal remains to rest today, we do so knowing that she came to the end with confident expectation. Amen. Confident expectation of a happy eternity. Yeah. Yeah, when I got the news, yeah, I said, Lord, it's interesting, huh? You love her so much that you didn't allow her to suffer. You just came and took her out of the way, yeah, the waiting gallery or the departure lounge. Personal attention you gave to her. So as we lay her mortal remain, the rest today, her story, this part of it, very impressive. It speaks for itself. How about yes? What do you suppose your final statement will be, your final parting words? Will your final parting words be, no, I don't know? So sometimes we squander life. Can we take life for granted? Then it snaps.
again for Jesus. Put your hands again together for those inspiring, challenging words that were spoken by the Reverend Dr. Derek Forrester. Now I'm here to pray for the family. So, but I also want to pray because I'm here to pray after such words. My first prayer is, I want, you to, I want you all to close your eyes. My first prayer is for those of us who do not know him as our Savior, those of us who want to know him, and in view of, as was mentioned, all that is happening today, and in view of the fact that we will die one day and stand before God, this evening, those of you who will say to me, I just want to pray for you. Say to me, I want to live for Jesus. Let's put your hands up. Put your hands up. Let me see what's happening in the back. Anybody else? Put your hands up for prayer. Yes. Okay, that's what you've got to do. Yes, you see those hands. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we give you thanks for those who have lifted their hands. And those who desire to serve you, those who desire to make a calling an election sure, those who desire to prepare themselves because we are going to stand before you one of these days and you will come to our lives. We pray, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will forgive them from their sins. You will receive them into your fold. You will receive them into your kingdom. And that you, O oh God, will transform their lives. So that when that day comes, they will be ready to stand before you, ready to meet you. Now, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Make it yours. And even for those of you who did not lift up your hands, and you want to make this prayer yours, just repeat it after me. Say, Lord Jesus, be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I accept you as my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so if you don't have a church that you go through, um, I know that they have service here. What time? 10 o'clock every Sunday. And um, I know they will have a Zoom or a website that you could really, and they will give it to you. You could contact them. So start this, this year, 2021, um, living for Jesus. And those of you who might be one foot out, one foot in, <laughs> bring the other foot. And, um, you know, because these are serious, serious times. Um, it's time to be drawn closer to God. Do it for yourself, do it for your children, do it for your family. Okay, so we want to ask the members of the family, those of you who can stand, we want to ask you to stand. And uh, we want to pray for you. Father in heaven, Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We thank you, O God, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you, O God, for this time we have spent in your presence. This time that reminds us about the need to live for you. This time that reminds us that life is very short indeed, and that one day we will truly expire and to make our calling an election sure. But Lord, we want to bring before you the members of this Walker family. And we bring them before you today in this time of prayer. We want to ask you, O oh God, to comfort them. Comfort them with that comfort that only you alone truly could give. Because you are touched with the feeling of our infirmities. 
You know what it means to experience the pain of, of loss. You know also what we are going through, what they are experiencing at this time. We pray, O oh Father, that you will truly give them that consolation. We pray also, Lord, that they will be a source of comfort to each other. That they will be a source of encouragement one to the other in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we know that many will feel, experience grief at different levels based on their relationship with her. And Lord, I pray especially for the husband. Father, Lord, um, after living so many years with, 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 with this woman, after sharing so many, Lord God Almighty, it is truly uh, a, a difficult moment for him. And we may find the consolation that, oh God, that she has gone on to be with you, that she is safe, that she is saved, and that she knows you as Lord and Savior. As the apostle said, therefore comfort one another with these words. And so that is the consolation we have today as far as the deceased is concerned, that she, has, she lived and died a Christian, and so she is awaiting the resurrection of God, and so we will be with her, that in great reunion, he will be reunited with his wife, and all who live godly in Christ Jesus and so die will be reunited one with the other. So we pray, O oh Father, that you will meet him, Lord. You know his heart at this time. You know, you know what he's feeling. You, you know, O oh Father, what he is going through at this time. But we thank you, God, for your great comfort and your great strength. And, O oh God, the strength that he will receive will be within the, the measure of what he's feeling today. So, Father, I pray for him especially that you will comfort them. And we thank you for all the sons and, and those who, of course, will continue, Lord, to be that source of comfort to their father. And all the children and grandchildren, just as the other children in the same, shall be a source of comfort to him. But we pray, O oh God, that you will continue to have your perfect way in this family. And we pray, O oh God, that Sister Walker's life, that they will take many of those positive characteristics or traits that she has left behind, and oh God, the, that legacy that she has left behind, and they will continue that legacy in the name of Jesus Christ, of, the, of determination, of faithfulness, and of truly of dependability, and a woman who loves and serves Almighty God and also serve others. We pray in the name of Jesus that they will continue to develop and they will continue to, to let it grow in their own spiritual lives. So, Father, we just want to say thank you. And we, we pray, O oh God, that you will surely give them the comfort, give them the consolation, and that you will meet them at the point of their needs. We know, Lord, we do not take it for granted. We know in, in, the, in the secular world, it says, when, when mother dies, family finish. But we pray, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus, that, that this will not be, of course, in this family, but that they will continue to bind themselves stronger, to be closer and, and to continue to grow and be a source of encouragement and help for one another. That they will continue to pray for one another. They will continue, oh God, to share what is necessary with each other in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, Father, what we have failed to ask you this evening, what is so necessary to each one of them, may you so grant them what is so needed. Into your hands, oh God, we commit this entire family. In Jesus' name, amen. Standing there, all roads lead to the Buku Public Cemetery for Intemba. But just before you move, stay where you are. I'm going to ask the representative on duty. Bring that man here.
I know that my Redeemer lives, that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh will I see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a flash. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God Almighty, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From now on, yes, says the Spirit, they rest from their labors, and their deeds will follow them. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God, hands to the rope, to take unto himself the soul of our departed sister Joanna, we commit her body to kindred dust. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May his name be blessed forever. From dust you came, Joanna, and to dust you retire. Confident expectation. Yeah. Something more to come. Oh, 